Congressional Democrats grill Attorney General Bill Barr, but end up looking idiotic. Joe Biden finally condemns violence, sort of, and COVID begins to tail off in Texas, Florida, and Arizona. I'm Ben Shapiro. This is The Ben Shapiro Show. The Ben Shapiro Show is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Why haven't you gotten a VPN yet? Visit expressvpn.com slash Ben. Well, if you learn nothing else from watching congressional hearings, you should learn that Congress people should not have control over your life because they are some of the dumbest people who have ever walked the earth. I mean, it truly is an incredible thing. Adam Carolla, my friend Adam Carolla, the comedian, he's, he's often said that when he was a kid and he was growing up, he would look at the adults and he would think to himself, they all must be pretty smart. I mean, they've got cars, they've got houses. And then he became an adult and he realized, nope, all those adults, they are just the same as the kids I was sitting next to when I was in kindergarten who were eating their own boogers. And the same holds true of the people who rule us. It turns out that many, many of the people who rule us are just awful at their jobs. And not just are they awful at their jobs, they are gutless, they are ridiculous. And never has that been more true than a congressional hearing that happened yesterday in which congressional Democrats went after Attorney General Bill Barr. Now, make no mistake, the only reason they were going after Bill Barr is because Bill Barr has actually been a pretty effective Attorney General. In particular, they're angry that Bill Barr committed the great sin of tasking the DOJ with investigating the origins of the Trump-Russia collusion conspiracism. And he actually allowed people at the DOJ to investigate exactly how we spent two years and tens of millions of dollars investigating a topic that ended up being a giant nothing burger. And it has uncovered some pretty stunning things about the malfeasance inside the Obama administration, their willingness to press forward on virtually no evidence toward prosecutions. Now, Bill Barr has been very good on a lot of this stuff. And now, it should be noted that Bill Barr has also disagreed with President Trump on a wide variety of topics. So, for example, President Trump was constantly suggesting that Roger Stone never should have gone to jail. Bill Barr never said that. Bill Barr said he should go to jail. He said he doesn't deserve nine years in jail because he's 67 years old, and this is really his first convictable criminal offense. But President Trump ended up pardoning Roger Stone. Democrats tried to blame Barr for Trump pardoning Roger Stone. So th there are a few things that were going on yesterday at this, at this ridiculous, ridiculous hearing. So they, they bring up Bill Barr because they want to yell at Bill Barr. The first thing to note is that the hatred that Democrats have for Bill Barr is just as strong as the hatred they have for Donald Trump, which does explain how Donald Trump became president of the United States. Now, a lot of people look at President Trump, they go, look at this vulgarian, look at this guy. How did this guy become president of the United States? I mean, they ran Mitt Romney in 2012, the epitome of, of class and moderation. And then they turn around, they run Trump. Like, what the hell was that? And the answer is, when Democrats treated Mitt Romney the same way they treated Trump, Republicans were like, okay, fine, we may as well just go with the guy who is going to clock them across the head with a frying pan. And that was underscored again yesterday when Bill Barr, who is a longtime Republican public official, he served going all the way back to the Reagan administration, and he is just a normal, intelligent Republican conservative. When they treated him with the same exact level of scorn and insanity that they treat President Trump, what that really suggests is that it's not Trump derangement syndrome. It's just conservative derangement syndrome, that any conservative ticks off the left to such an end that they will treat them like Trump. And this does underscore again the fact that when Trump puts out ads where it's a picture of his face and he says, they're not after me, they're after you, there is some truth to that. For a lot of conservatives, for a lot of Republicans, they look at how the media and Democrats treat Trump and they think, that's how they would treat me too if I were president of the United States, even if I weren't doing all the crazy things that Trump is doing. Okay, so Barr arrives on Capitol Hill and he gives an opening statement. And his opening statement is pretty good. I mean, his opening statement really takes on a couple of topics. He first explains that the reason he's being called in is because Democrats are angry that he actually investigated Russiagate. And then he went on to explain that the violence that we have been seeing around the country is not appropriate and that police across the country are not systemically racist. So here was William Barr's opening statement explaining that police are not the main threat to black Americans in today's day and age. Threat to black lives posed by crime on the streets is massively greater than any threat posed by police misconduct. The leading cause of death for young black males is homicide. Every year, approximately 7,500 black Americans are victims of homicide. The, mass, the vast majority of them, around 90%, are killed by other blacks, mainly by gunfire. Each of those lives matter. Now, that might be worthy of discussion, but nobody in the left is going to have that discussion. Because when they say black lives matter, as we learned from Don Lemon, they don't mean all black lives matter. They just mean that we don't like the police very much. So when Barr doubled down on that and he said, I don't believe there's systemic racism in police departments, you could see the smoke start to exit the Democrats' ears. Here was William Barr talking about systemic racism in police departments. Does the Trump Justice Department seek to end systemic racism and racism in law enforcement? I just need a yes or no answer. 
to the extent there is racism in any of our institutions in this country and the police, then obviously this administration is, will, will fully enforce this. So you agree country. that there may be systemic racism? To the extent, in, in, in where? where? Uh, let me continue my line of questioning. I, I don't agree that there's systemic racism in the police department. Specifically. Generally in this country. Okay, th this was the tenor of the questioning. So Democrats would ask a question, and then as soon as Barr would start to answer the question, Democrats would leap in and say, I see, I, I recall my time. I reclaim my time. And John Pod Horace over at Commentary Magazine points out that that actually is not in the procedure. Okay, when you reclaim your time normally in Congress during a correct congressional hearing, it's because you've ceded your time to another congressperson. And then let's say you want to cut them off, then you reclaim your time. You can't do that from a witness. The whole point of having a witness that you're calling is to hear from the witness. But what Democrats were there to do is browbeat Barr, and by extension, browbeat Trump, right? That's really what this was about. So it's just them acting like jackasses, like boorish jackasses. And in the process, justifying violence, it was incredible. Barr said probably 10 times during this hearing, guys, can you just like condemn the fact that people are trying to burn down federal courthouses and not a word of it from Democrats? Democrats just would not go there. Here was William Barr saying, I don't understand. Why can't anybody just say it's bad to burn down a courthouse? We have the obligation to protect, to, to protect federal courts, and the U.S. Marshals specifically have been given that obligation. Federal courts are under attack. Since when is it okay to try to burn down a federal court? If someone went down the street to the Prettyman Court here, that beautiful courthouse we have right at the bottom of the hill, and started breaking windows and firing industrial-grade fireworks in to start a fire, throw kerosene balloons in and, and start fires in the court, is that okay? Is that okay now? Okay, and the Democrats' answer was, well, kind of. I mean, it depends who's doing it, right? That was sort of the Democratic answer. We'll get to that in just one moment. Again, the idea that you should give more power to Congress so that these idiots can run your life is beyond me. I, I don't know why in the world you would. We'll talk about this in one second. First, there are a thousand reasons why protecting your home matters to you. First of all, your family lives there. Second of all, you've expended a lot of your time and energy in making your home a home for yourself. Why exactly would you leave it vulnerable to people who may not want to do the best things to your house. This is why you need Ring. Whatever you call home, Ring has everything you need to protect it. You can see and speak to whoever is at your door from anywhere with video doorbells. You can keep an eye on every corner of your house with easy to install indoor and outdoor cams. You can protect your whole home with Ring Alarm, a powerful, affordable whole home security system you can easily install yourself. I've used Ring myself for years and I am deeply invested in my own home security because not only my public figure, but I got a lot of kids running around the property. At this point, I want to make sure I have an eye on them so I can tell when my son is about to do something that is going to do him grave bodily injury. Get a special offer on the Ring Welcome Kit at ring.com slash Ben. It comes with the Ring Video Doorbell 3 and Chime Pro. It's the perfect way to start your Ring experience, plus free two-day shipping. Go to ring.com slash Ben. That is ring.com slash Ben. Go check them out right now. One of the great things about Ring is not only can you see who is actually knocking on your front door, but... You can also make sure that you can just call the cops if it turns out that it's something that you don't want happening. Ring is creating a safer, a safer neighborhood for you. They have all these apps that you can check to see what sort of crime has been happening in your neighborhood so you know what exactly is going on. Go to ring.com slash Ben and get the Ring Welcome Kit, a special offer on the Ring Welcome Kit at ring.com slash Ben. Again, that comes with the Ring Video, video Doorbell 3 and the Chime Pro. So lots of good stuff happening at ring.com slash Ben. Go check them out right now. Okay, so Democrats just made asses of themselves. Uh, I mean, it, it really was. It was the most impressive showing of Democratic self-assery that I've seen since the Kavanaugh hearings. During the Kavanaugh hearings, when they were all out there claiming that Brett Kavanaugh, a respected Catholic jurist of 40 years, was actually a gang rapist. That was pretty bad. Yesterday was also not particularly good for the Democrats. So here is a, a, a montage cut from Laura Ingram's show yesterday of Democrats insulting Barr just over and over and over, like for no reason. Like Barr comes in and, and instead of them just asking him questions, they basically just yell insults at him. And then as soon as he starts to respond, they go, I reclaim my time which makes you look like a ridiculous jerk. Here is, here is a bunch of Democrats doing this to Barr yesterday. Shame on you, Mr. Barr. Can I just say, Mr. Shame on you. You have consistently undermined democracy, undermined the Constitution, and undermined the health, safety, and well-being of the American people. When you all came here and brought your top staff, you brought no black people. That, sir, is systematic racism. Your failure to respect the role of peaceful protest in this country is a disgrace. It's un-American. Mr. Barr, I just asked for a yes or move. no. So let me just tell you, I'm starting to lose my temper. Federal this is government. my time, and I control it. I introduced H.R.S. 1032, which would require this committee to investigate your conduct as attorney general and determine whether you should be impeached. There's so much insanity in that particular montage that we actually have to break down a few of the pieces of insanity in that particular montage. And Barr's just sitting there looking at them like they're small children screaming at him. 
I mean, I know that look on William Barr's face because I've used that look on my own children. When my kids are freaking out about something incredibly dumb. And I'm just, I'm just sitting there like, you've got to be kidding me. You've absolutely got to be kidding me. Like, come on. Come on. So, so, okay, so let's break down a few of the criticisms that they just dropped on, on William Bard there. So a couple of my favorites. So I, I really loved, there's a representative named Richmond, where he said, you didn't bring any black staffers, which is systemic racism. You heard him say that one. We I mean, play it again, this clip eight. It's pretty fantastic. Cedric Richmond from Louisiana. The one thing that you have in common with your two predecessors, both Attorney General Sessions and Attorney General Whitaker, is that when you all came here and brought your top staff, you brought no black people. That, sir, is systematic racism. That is exactly what John Lewis spent his life uh, fighting. And so I would just suggest uh, that actions speak louder than words. And you should really should keep the name of the Honorable John Lewis out of the Department of Justice's uh, mouth. Okay, that's absurd and disgusting. It is. I mean, who are the black staffers that William Barr left behind because he's like, ah, oh, you're black. Stay back here at the DOJ. You don't get to come because you're black. Like, what kind of nonsense is this? That is not systematic racism. Okay, if, if I brought along top staffers from Daily Wire, I don't know exactly what race or sex they would be. I'd have to think about that one. I'd make a list, and then whatever they are, they are. You think William Barr is sitting around and going, well, I guess that, you know, we need some black staffers up here so we can show Cedric Richmond that we're not systematically racist. Absolute insanity. I, I, the, the other thing that Cedric Richmond says there is just despicable, where he says that, that William Barr should not be able to invoke John Lewis because John Lewis was about nonviolent resistance, right? Nonviolent demonstration. And so because Barr had disagreements with Lewis politically, that means that you're never allowed to invoke any of the good things that he did, including his support for nonviolent resistance. Absolute craziness. Absolutely. So that one was a really solid piece from a Democrat. Here, here's another one that was pretty solid. So this one got all sorts of press. Representative Jayapal, she, she decided to go after Barr. And this was one of those slay queen moments. She's a Democrat, Pramila Jayapal from Washington. The, the internet went nuts for this. So Pramila Jayapal went after William Barr, the attorney general. And she did so by suggesting that he is disparately treating violent protest. There's only one problem. Her entire story here is just crap. It makes no sense at all. But it was all slay queen. And the media are so biased. I mean, it's crazy. You were seeing reporters tweeting out fire emojis, which obviously says objective journalism. Here's Pramila Jayapal making a fool of herself, but the media cheering her on. When white men with swastikas storm a government building with guns, there is no need for the president to, quote, activate you because they're getting the president's personal agenda done. But when black people and people of color protest police brutality, systemic racism, and the president's very own lack of response to those critical issues, then you forcibly remove them with armed federal officers pepper bombs because they are considered terrorists by the president. You take an aggressive approach to Black Lives Matter protests, but not to right wing extremists threatening to lynch a governor if it's for the Trump's if it's for the president's benefit. OK, and Barr's sitting there like, I can't believe this lady. I can't believe this. There are a few things that she just completely blows here. Number one, the, the anti lockdown protests, which is what she is talking about there. They were peaceful. They did not erupt into violence. Number two, they happened on state property. You know who doesn't get to police state property? You know who doesn't? The federal government. That's not the job of William Barr. Number three, you know what's actually happening in those cities? Not Black Lives Matter protesters protesting on federal property. Them trying to burn down federal courthouses, which requires the federal government to defend it. This was a slay queen moment, though, because she was mean to Bill Barr. We live in the stupidest timeline. It's just unbelievably dumb. And then you have Representative Hank Johnson, who once compared Jews to termites. So he's a delight. He went after Barr. He said, your opening statement reads like Alex Jones. And Barr's like, what are, you, what, what are you talking about? Why did I talk about, I'm turning the frogs gay? Like, what, what now? Here's Hank Johnson, who when he is uh, not talking about the Jews as termites, he's talking about Guam tipping over into the sea because there are too many people on it. Uh, here, here he is, one of our wise Congress people. General Barr, your opening statement reads like it was written by Alex Jones or Roger Stone. Do you stand by that statement? Yes. <laughs> He has no idea what he's talking about because this is all absolute nonsense. So they bring him up and they just yell at him. I mean, they just, they're just yell at him. I mean, that, that's the whole thing is that they feel good about themselves because they're just yelling at him. At one point, Steve Cohen, the Democrat from Tennessee, he actually accused Barr personally of being responsible for Epstein's death, for Jeffrey Epstein's death, which was pretty entertaining because we all know it was Hillary. Anyway, here was Steve Cohen, the Democrat from Tennessee, going after Barr by suggesting that Barr is somehow responsible. It's Barr's fault. Byron went in there and he strangled Jeffrey Epstein to death. Good stuff, Democrats, good stuff. 
You've gone through the Fifth Amendment and due process and just negated it. And the Tenth Amendment, which leaves general policing to the law enforcement, to the states, has been forgotten. Maybe what happened was your secret police were poorly trained, just like your Bureau of Prisons guards were poorly trained and allowed the most notorious inmate in our nation's last several years, Jeffrey Epstein, to conveniently commit suicide. Sad. 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 I, I like that he's he's getting all mad and his hair's flying all around. Like, it's like a, it's Wallace Shawn looking like over here, Steve Cohen. Good stuff there from Steve. So the Democrats really did themselves yeoman's work. They looked fantastic. But here's the thing. They even extended their argument beyond William Barr's just a mean, bad, bad man who's bad and mean. They, they accused him of murder. So that was pretty solid. We'll get to that in just one second. First, if you've been listening to the show for a while, you probably heard me talk about my magical Helix Sleep mattress. It is indeed magical. You know, I've been suffering from some severe exhaustion given the demands of my schedule lately, which means I treasure my Helix Sleep mattress. Treasure it. But it's not just Helix Sleep, okay? They now have launched something new, Helix has. They've gone beyond the bedroom. They've started making sofas. They just launched a new company. It's called Allform. They're making premium, customizable sofas and chairs shipped directly to your door. So what makes an Allform sofa really cool? Well, for starters, it's the easiest way you can customize a sofa using premium materials and at a fraction of the cost of traditional stores. You can pick your fabric, the sofa color, the color of the legs, sofa shape, shape to make sure it's perfect for you. And... Your home. They've got armchairs. They've got love seats all the way up to an AT sectional. You can keep adding to it. It can build something really amazing for your home. You can start small. You can bolt on more later if you want your all-form sofa to grow and change with you when you move. They're really durable, which means a lot to me since I have kids who wreck things. All-form sofas are delivered directly to your home with fast free shipping. In the past, if you wanted to order a sofa, it could take weeks or even months to arrive. You would need someone to come and assemble it in your home. All-form takes three to seven days to arrive in the mail, and you can assemble it yourself. I have an all-form sofa. I picked out a three-seat sofa with shades in the sand color with espresso legs. It is fan-freaking-tastic. Allform is offering 20% off all orders right now for our listeners at allform.com slash Ben. Again, that's allform.com slash Ben. Go check them out right now. Allform.com slash Ben for the magical discount. Okay, so they also accused William Barr of murder. So that was good. So he didn't just murder Jeffrey Epstein. Overall, he was just, uh, he was a murderer. So this is pretty solid stuff here from uh, a congresswoman named Powell. What am I supposed to say to my constituents when they ask me if the government has done everything in its power to protect their loved ones from dying. I would tell them that managing this kind of thing requires a lot of uh, difficult choices and weighing different uh, consequences. I'm not going to lie. And that is, and that is I am left, not going to lie to my constituents. I am to, going to tell them that government President government that Donald Trump governor. and the Attorney General working together the, are letting Americans die needlessly no, because no. of political reasons. It, is it permissible for a member of this committee to accuse the sitting Attorney General of the United States of murder, because that's what we just heard. The members control the time. Mr. Chairman. Mr. To say Mr. whatever Chairman. they want. Mr. What about Chairman. rules of decorum? Oh, no, forget decorum. Rules of decorum. That was one of the Republicans going, wait a second, you just accused William Barr of murdering people of COVID. And, and that's what happened, right? The lady asked him a question. The, the Congresswoman asked him a question. She asks, so how should I explain to my constituents how you make policy? And he's like, well, you know, we take into account risks and rewards, and then we have to make tough decisions. He's like, I'm not going to say any of that. I'm going to say that you went to an old age home and you smothered grandma with a pillow, didn't you? Didn't you? You went and you got a, a vat of propofol and you just grabbed a syringe and you put the propofol in the syringe and you went up to your own grandfather and you just jabbed it right in his jugular, didn't you? Didn't you? Democrats, really, really these, are, these are the finest among us. They're the finest among us. Then, when Barr attempted to defend himself, like there was one point where a congresswoman was trying to shame him on Obamacare by saying, how dare you take the position on Obamacare you do? I have had cancer, sir. And Barr was like, I have two daughters who have both had cancer. And she's like, shut up, you. You're not allowed to talk about your own stories. What do you think you're doing right now? This is clip 30. I have two children who are cancer survivors, so I feel very strongly uh, about this issue as a matter of policy. And I believe that the president's made clear uh, that he will ensure that Sir, there will- Sir, please answer my question. Will you stop playing politics with well, I, Americans' health care in the middle of a pandemic? Yeah, this is just, I'm sorry, it was ridiculous. Okay, so this is normal sort of ridiculousness. I'll admit, this is normal, right? Because. Televised congressional sessions are basically just soapboxes for the Congress people to make fools of themselves. The sort of badgering of the witness, that was something new, right? That, that, I, that I've not really seen to that extent before. It, it, was, it was extraordinarily over the top. But where it really got ugly is when Barr started to push back and Barr was saying things like, so can you condemn violence at all? Like, at all, at all? 
Like, it's, it's not great that our cities are on fire right now. And Democrats are like, our cities aren't on fire. Our cities are perfect. Everything is great. Everything is great. It's like Laura Linney from The Truman Show. Everything is fine. Everything's good. And here is an ad inserted into your world. Here is Jerry Nadler yesterday suggesting that protesters aren't mobs, that there are no mobs. The mobs exist only in William Barr's imagination. Here is Jerry Nadler, a delusional idiot. You really can't hide behind legal fictions this time, Mr. Barr. It's all out in the open, where the people can see what you are doing for themselves. The president wants footage for his campaign ads, and you appear to be serving it up to him as ordered. In most of these cities, the protests had begun to wind down before you marched in and confronted the protesters. And the protesters aren't mobs. They are mothers and veterans and mayors. Oh, is that, is that what they are? Um, they're, ma- they're mothers and veterans and mayors who are burning down courthouses and assaulting people and taking over areas of city streets at the behest of the mayors. Really well done. Okay, and, and it wasn't just Nadler. Okay, Nadler, you might think that he's an outlying idiot. He, in fact, is not. It turns out that many, many Democrats just kept claiming over and over that the violence we're seeing in our streets is nothing. It's gone. It doesn't exist. All in your imagination. Here, in fact, is a montage of Democrats talking about how these were all peaceful protests. It's all peaceful protests. Everything is peaceful. Mostly peaceful. Everything's mostly peaceful. Now, their definition of mostly peaceful is supremely fungible. These are the same folks who suggested that Tea Partiers were terrorists for the great sin of holding rallies at which they cleaned up their own trash. These are the same folks who suggested that anti-lockdown protesters were violent. These are the same people who were deeply concerned when gun owners descended on the Virginia State House in open carry, and abided by the law and had nonviolent protests. And they were like, oh, well, maybe that's, that's, that, maybe that's violence, maybe. Well, now they're all like, they're burning things down. That's not, that's not violence. That's just like, that's just fun, guys. I mean, come on. It's like miniature golf, except the flaming object. Here's a bunch of Democrats talking about the peacefulness of the peaceful protests that are not peaceful. The protesters aren't mobs. They are mothers and veterans and mayors. We've seen mothers and we've seen veterans who are peacefully protesting, not threatening the federal courthouse, beaten and gassed. And the vast majority of the protesters are peaceful. Most of the protests have been peaceful, Mr. Barr. You know that. You know, you know that they've mostly been peaceful. Yes, and the people who are peaceful are not the ones being arrested. The ones who are violating curfew and violating the law and attacking federal courthouses are the ones who are being arrested. Democrats know all of this, but they have a narrative. And the question is, what exactly do they get out of this? Seriously, what do they get out of attacking federal and local law enforcement? The answer is they are in so they're in such thrall to their left and they just assume that because Trump is president, they can get away with it. But I don't think they can forever. I think they can in the short term. I think they can in the short term. This is why they will they will simply attack law enforcement, which, by the way, most Americans like law enforcement, but they'll attack law enforcement. What they figure is that for the next few years, at least they've got some running room here. We'll talk about that in just one second. First. Did you know that a hacker strikes every 39 seconds stealing videos, passwords, files, you name it? They want it. Now take a second to think about all the private information you've got on your computer and your mobile devices, your pictures, videos, financial information, work files, personal documents. All of it is being targeted every 39 seconds, to be more exact. So what are you doing to stop that from happening? You need protection. PCmatic is making that protection happen for you. They know hackers are constantly striking and attack methods are always changing. That's why PCmatic does it differently. PCmatic protects your devices by only permitting known trusted programs to run. No matter how many times the hackers try, PCmatic keeps them out and keeps your information safe. They're the only antivirus company that does its development, research, and customer support 100% in the United States. You're not going to have to worry about the Chinese government using your information against you. When it comes to cyber attacks, it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. Protect yourself right now with PCmatic. They protect Macs, Windows, Servers, Android phones and tablets, pretty much everything. Get a free month of protection with the purchase of an annual license at PCmatic.com slash Ben. Again, that's PCmatic.com slash Ben. Keep the bad guys out and your personal information secure with PCmatic. That's PCmatic.com slash Ben. Go check them out right now. Okay, so what exactly is in it for Democrats in ripping on the police and ripping on law enforcement and defending rioters and looters? They just believe that because Trump is so wildly unpopular, they can get away with it. And they're afraid that their leftist base will abandon them and attack them as on the side of the fascist Trump. It's amazing how all of politics has has centralized around this point. It also happens to be true that for literally decades, Democrats have been soft on crime. This has been true for a very long time. And when a Democrat was not soft on crime, such as Joe Biden in 1994, now he's retroactively ripped into for being soft on crime, for, for being hard on crime, rather. This is how you end up with Congresswoman named Lofgren saying yesterday that when there is police that breaks out in the streets, when there's violence that breaks out in the streets, Zoe Lofgren of California, full-scale moron. When she says that violence breaks out on the streets, you have to blame the police. 
It's the cops' fault. You see, the cops who are responding to the violence, they're the ones who are actually causing the violence. It's one thing to fight crime with joint task forces. That involves the cooperation of state and local officials. But the governor of Oregon and the mayor of Portland has asked that the federal troops leave because the reaction has actually been uh, in, in reverse proportion. People are showing up because the troops are there. And I'd like to say that so many of them, I would say most of them are uh, n- nonviolent. Everybody's nonviolent. It's only the troops that are causing the problem. It's only the troops. I'm old enough to remember when Democrats actually mouthed support for police and federal law enforcement. Now they've just decided they're done with it. Zoe Lofgren then continued by saying that President Trump hopes to win by sending troops to American cities. So she's repeating the nonsense put out by Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin, who suggested the other day Trump is looking for martial law in cities. That's why he's defending courthouses. Here is Representative Lofgren yesterday going after William Barr. Millions of Americans have been infected. Tens of thousands are dying. And the president needs to divert from that failure. And what is the playbook? The playbook is to create the impression that there is violence, that he must send in federal troops, and that the the American people uh, should be afraid of other Americans and trust the president because he's going to send in all troops to American cities. And that's how it's not that you're watching the news, and it's not that you're watching the internet. It's not that you've seen videos of people taking over large areas of downtown cities. No, it's, it's all an impression that Trump is creating. He has that magical, magical ability. So, okay, at a certain point, William Bard had enough of this. And basically, the entire Democratic show here was an attempt to shut Barr down and prevent him from talking. All right, we'll ask you a question. Barr will start to answer. And then we say we reclaim our time. That didn't stop Barr from getting in a few counter jabs. So there's one point where one of the Congress people is going after Barr and saying, you know, even church leaders were angry that you cleared Lafayette Square. And Barr was like, yeah, was that before or after they, they put out the fire at the church? Are you aware that the rector of the church, that the Episcopal Archbishop of Washington and the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church nationally, along with the Catholic bishop of the Archdiocese of Washington, all denounced this police assault on the civil rights and civil liberties of the people? Did they do that before or after the fire was put out? Well, all that, all that I know is that they denounced what you did. J.B. Raskin, that guy, <laughs> his head so far up his ass that it's coming out his face again. It's incredible. <laughs> That's good stuff. Also, uh, uh, some of these questions were just so bad. So Ted Deutsch went after, went after Barr, the representative from Florida. He went after Barr, and he suggested that Barr had basically gotten Roger Stone pardoned. And Barr was like, um, that never happened. I don't know what you're talking about. The Democrats didn't even bother to do like basic research before they just started going after Barr. So here's the problem. Barr actually has a triple digit IQ as opposed to many of the other members of Congress. Uh, and so here's an exchange between Deutsch and Barr, which Barr just wrecks Deutsch. He started on July 31st. The first week he was there, he came to raise this issue. I think he started February 1st. Right. Yeah. The first week he was there, he came into your office to raise the issue of sentencing. Um, in the interview you did with ABC, you said... No, you never- I, I don't think he... he- that's what, you, that's what you told ABC News. You said that he's talked to senior staff. Not you, perhaps, but he talked to senior staff. That, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, what, you know, I think I speak English. I said that before he came in to see me, I believe he had some conversations. Conversations with senior staff, right. Okay, so Barr kept asking for people to be precise, and Democrats just couldn't be precise, and they wouldn't be precise. And so Barr just kept being like, I'm speaking... Like, are we speaking the same? And the answer is no, they're not speaking the same language. Barr was trying to answer questions and Democrats were trying to browbeat him to the point where Nadler actually refused him a bathroom break in the middle of this, which is just like the biggest ass move of all time, right? I mean, Barr, how old is Barr? Barr's got to be closing in on 70 if he's not 70 already. William Barr, so that prostate's got to be going at a certain point here. He's, yeah, he's, he's exactly 70 years old. And so, you know, sometimes you got to pee. And he, <laughs> and Barr was like, can I have a bathroom break? And Nadler's like, no, you can't. I was like, what kind of stupid crap is this? <laughs> Uh, here it was, your Congress at work. Could we take a five-minute break, Mr. Chairman? No. That's a common courtesy, Mr. Dean is Chairman, right of every witness. Un- I, I waited 45, uh, we are, an hour for you this morning. I haven't had almost, lunch. I'd like to take Mr. a five-minute break. Mr. Attorney General, we're, we are almost finished. We're, we're, we're going to be finished in a, in a few minutes. If, if, otherwise, uh, you can, we can certainly take a break, but... Um, you're real class. Yeah. Yes, after this. 
It's unbelievable. I mean, they're just, no, we won't take a five minute break. We won't because you're a bad man. So you won't be allowed to pee. Also, Barr was asked whether he was a Republican or not. They're like, you're a Republican, aren't you? And Barr's like, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I, I am. Here's Representative Scanlon. Again, a, a greater repository of stupidity has never been unearthed than the, apparently the House Judiciary Committee. This is solid stuff here. You said in 2017 that prosecutors who make political contributions are identifying fairly strongly with a political party, yes. correct? Yes. And in fact, you and your wife have donated over $730,000 to Republican and conservative candidates, including donations of $58,000 to Republican senators and Senate candidates in the four months preceding your confirmation. Are That's you, surpri correct, are you surprised it? I'm a Republican? <laughs> Well, the media were. The media were very surprised he was a Republican. So the media's treatment of this was perfectly on point for the media, which is he can just be ripped up and down bar and he's supposed to sit there and take it. And if he doesn't, he's a very bad, mean man. He's a very bad, terrible, mean man. This led a bunch of Democrats to go out there and whine about how Barr had disrespected them. They literally accused him of murder, refused him a bathroom break and suggested that he killed Jeffrey Epstein. And then they're like, why aren't you being respectful? Why aren't you being respectful? And then when he would answer, they'd be like, why well, seize back my time? Because you're being disrespectful, sir. A bunch of Democrats calling Barr disrespectful for no apparent reason. Have you now called for law enforcement to stop using these chemical irritants on protesters? Yes or no? Pepper spray? Yes. No. You? No? I think it's a very important uh, non-lethal option. For protesters? No, for, sir, for rioters. That was my question. For protesters? No, for rioters. Yes. Sir, America was founded on the principles of free speech. When, when people resist Excuse law enforcement, they're not peaceful. Claiming my time. I'm surprised at your lack of respect for a member of Congress. Okay, well, first of all, whenever a congressperson does this, it's the biggest ridiculous, it's, it's the worst move. It's the worst move. Mayor Barbara Boxer did this to a service member at one point. Call me Senator. Don't call me Ms. Call me Senator. Uh, I'm surprised at your lack of respect for a congressperson. He's the Attorney General of the United States. Where is it? Where's your respect for him? I mean, that, that, is a, that is a congressional approved appointment right there. And you, you represent like some district somewhere. Yeah, I have tons of respect for you. Ooh, you're a congressperson. Ooh, I know enough Congress people to know that they don't deserve a lot of respect. Okay, <laughs> I know enough Congress people personally to know that they don't deserve tons of respect. In just a second, we'll get to the media treatment of this, which is predictably awful. I mean, just predictably awful. And, and we'll get to also the question of, again, why are Democrats going along with the violence and the looting? And Joe Biden put out a statement kind of condemning the violence, kind of condemning it, but mostly it was just about Trump. He's trying to walk that middle line. We'll get to that in just one second. First, let's talk about the fact that you really don't want to be going to an auto parts store right now. Instead, why wouldn't you just get the auto parts you need online using the interwebs? I know it's an amazing thing. This is why you should be using rockauto.com. Rockauto.com, it's much easier than walking into a store and someone demanding quick answers to things like, is your Odyssey an LX or an EX? And then they just have to order the part online anyway, so you have to wait for it because there are lots of types of cars and you can't keep everything stocked. And then they overcharge you because they're charging you rather than charging a professional, rockauto.com. Okay, it's a family business. They serve auto parts customers online. They've been doing it for 20 years. Head on over to rockauto.com. Shop for auto and body parts from hundreds of manufacturers. Best of all, prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low and the same for professionals and do-it-yourselfers. Why would you spend up to twice as much for the same parts? The rockauto.com catalog is unique, remarkably easy to navigate quickly. See all the parts available for your vehicle and choose the brands, specifications, and prices you prefer. They've got amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Head on over to rockauto.com. Dot com. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck. Write Shapiro in there. How did you hear about us box? So they know that we sent you. Go check them out right now. Rockauto.com right now. Write Shapiro in that. How did you hear about us box? So they know that we sent you. All righty. We'll get back to the full scale media insanity. The, their reaction to this congressional hearing was, look at these beautiful, wonderful Democrats and look at that mean man, Bill Barr. The, this, this sort of gaslighting, you wonder why people have lost their faith in major American institutions. I think we know the answer to that. We'll get to that in a second. First, if you haven't heard by now, my new book, How to Destroy America in Three Easy Steps, it's officially on sale. You've probably heard about it because it was the number two best-selling book in America on Amazon this week. And we're just waiting for the New York Times rankings to come out. It's going to be near the top of those charts as well. The book covers the disintegrationist philosophy of the United States. That is, to make real social progress, the entire American system has to be dissolved and replaced with a, quote-unquote, more equal system, a government top-down tyrannical system. You can see the narrative playing out in real time before our eyes in major cities and in Congress. How to destroy America in three easy steps. It details how this garbage disintegrationist worldview has gained cultural ground so quickly, why it's so, why it's so seductive. You can get your copy at Amazon or Barnes & Noble. And if you like the book, please hop in, leave a five-star review. That keeps it higher on the charts so more people see it. Enjoy. Also, 2020. It's been a wild year, has it not? 
I mean, Trump was impeached this year. Bernie Sanders was leading the presidential race this year. And the leftist media, they just continue to lie to you, as we'll talk about in just one minute. When you can't get the real story, you have to go outside the spin and get the facts. So if you're a political junkie set on getting both sides of the story, get a reader's pass today from dailywire.com. You get access to exclusive op-eds from us, your podcast hosts, as well as guest writers, and in-depth analysis from our Daily Wire reporters on top of regular breaking news. I have a brand new article today out about the Democratic attempt to spin violent rioting and looting as quote-unquote mostly peaceful. This membership tier, our Reader's Pass, it's already a bargain at three bucks a month. If you join today, you get that first month for 99 cents. You also get access to our mobile app. You receive push notifications for breaking news and special content. And you get to join the community of Daily Wire members actively commenting and discussing our content with each other. That's mobile ad-free access to all the Daily Wire news, exclusive op-eds, all our podcasts on our mobile app, all for the low price of $1. And best of all, your dollars are getting you the, left, the news you need without all the leftist nonsense. So head on over to dailywire.com slash subscribe. Join today. You're listening to the largest, fastest growing conservative podcast and radio show in the nation. So the media responded to all of this with sheer gusto and joy with regard to the Democrats and pure rage at William Barr for the great sin of being existent. So this led Chuck Todd, very objective Chuck Todd, just journalisming all over the place, just getting his journalism everywhere. Here is Chuck Todd saying he was very surprised at how partisan Barr was. How partisan Barr was. They heard all the clips. People literally accusing the man of murder and saying, yeah, if you talk about your cancer-stricken daughters, that's bad. We're not going to let you do that. Here's Chuck Todd being, yeah, but William Barr responded. And that means he's a partisan. I've been surprised at how comfortable Bill Barr is playing a partisan. And I say it this way. He, you know, wants to... You know, he lets misstatements go if they're from allies. He corrects misstatements on the left. He had an, an odd view of testing, somehow blaming Barack Obama and the CDC. It was it was sort of the type of the type of answer you'd expect from a political pundit on a certain cable channel, not necessarily from the sitting attorney general. Oh, you know, it's, he was being political, Barr. I can't be, Chuck Todd can't can't believe it. Eric Holder literally called himself Barack Obama's wingman. But Attorney General Barr is being political. And then Andrea Mitchell, she came out and she said, you know, he keeps talking about violence. All these Republicans, they keep talking about violence in, in our streets. That's not happening. That's all selectively edited. Selectively edited, guys. As opposed to when we just show you the peaceful stuff and not fireworks flying into the federal courthouse. It's all selectively edited, says Andrea Mitchell, getting her journalism everywhere as well. Ranking Republican Jim Jordan showed a graphic, selectively edited, nearly eight-minute montage of protests from around the country, which he claimed were anything but peaceful, including sound bites from Democrats, Biden and Obama. Uh, clearly, uh, very political and highly edited. Oh, very, very political and highly edited, as opposed to NBC News' coverage, which is apolitical and non-edited. They just show raw footage from the streets in Portland. That's, that's, that's what they do. Perhaps my favorite example of a media member just completely botching it is Joy Reid, who, again, IQ of a kumquat, Joy Reid. This is, this is not a, a bright person. Also, apparently, was, was hacked years ago, retroactively. Somebody took a time machine back to her blog and wrote a bunch of homophobic stuff. Anyway, Joy Reid tweeted out, say the whole word, bar. What does Antifa stand for? Spell it out. Okay, I'll do it for you. Anti-fascist. Now, do go on. Hashtag bar hearing, because bar was going after Antifa. You know, since they call themselves anti-fascist, that means that they're anti-fascist. Like the People's Republic of China, it's actually a People's Republic, you see. So if you worry about abuses and you worry about tyranny over there, that's because you're not reading the name. It says right in the name, PRC, People's Republic of China. It says right in the name of North Korea that it is a republic. It literally says it right there. So I don't know what you're complaining about, like tyranny over there. Now, the Nazis, the National Socialist Party, it says right in the name, socialist. So I don't know why you're so upset about it. Like, what, 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 what? <laughs> We deserve a better class of, uh, of press. That is, that is for damn sure. Meanwhile, Joe Biden, basically, again, he's run a fairly error-free campaign at this point because not much has been required of him. All he has to do is not be Trump and be slightly alive. And when I say slightly alive, I don't mean like super alive. Super alive means that he's gaffing all over the place. Well, he needs to be slightly alive. Like he has to be able to breathe somewhat comfortably in and out and every so often express noise through his mouth. That's pretty much all that is required for Joe Biden to win the election, given all of the, the pre-existing conditions uh, in this in this election. So Joe Biden put out a statement on the violence, finally, after some weeks. Here was Joe Biden's statement. And it is demonstrative of just how Democrats see violence. Because even Joe Biden, who's the quote unquote moderate, right? The guy standing up against the wild left. Even Joe Biden, he has to turn it into a, a diatribe against Trump. He can't just say it's bad that people are burning down our cities. So he says this, quote, I've said from the outset of recent protests, there's no place for violence and destruction of property. Peaceful protesters should be malarkey 
protected. And arsonists and anarchists should be prosecuted. Local law enforcement can do that. When President Obama and I were in office, we protected him. So then he fell asleep. The rest of his statement says, local law enforcement can do that. When President Obama and I were in office, we protected federal property, which is weird. I, I remember Baltimore and Ferguson burning. He said, we were able to do it without the Department of Homeland Security turning into a private militia. So now he's suggesting that law enforcement agents are a private militia for the president, which is a lie. Is he's determined to stoke chaos and division. This can be done today, but that wouldn't help Trump's political interests. It's not good for the country, but Donald Trump doesn't care. His campaign is failing. He's looking for political lifeline. This isn't about law and order. It's about a political strategy to revive a failing campaign. Every instinct Trump has is to add fuel to the fire. That's the last thing, the last thing we need. We need leadership to calm the waters and lower the temperature. That's how we will restore peace in the streets. So um, the way you'll restore peace in the streets is by not getting involved when they assault federal property. That, that's how you'll do it. And does Joe Biden have any idea about like how to get local law enforcement involved? Of course not. So basically, he says, violence is bad, but also I would do nothing about it. So this is where we now sit. We now sit in a time where the mainstream Democratic Party, including the presidential candidate, have basically made the decision that while they were, so, they'll sort of scoff at and tut tut some of the violence going on in the streets, they're not going to do anything about it. And they're going to yell if anybody does do anything about it, which mostly suggests that they're rooting for the chaos, that they kind of like the chaos, that they're fond of the chaos. And anybody who stands up to the chaos is sort of the problem. Now, meanwhile, there's a lot of speculation going on about Biden's VP candidate because, of course, that will be the next president of the United States. Everyone knows that Biden is uh, a short-term proposition. If, by some miracle, the man is healthy enough to live through one term, there is there is not going to be a second, I would assume. I mean, it's, it's very difficult to imagine a man running for re-election at 83. But in any case, there's a lot of talk about Kamala Harris. That talk was exacerbated yesterday when Politico somehow put up on their website an announcement that Harris had been selected. It was, it was obviously a pre-written announcement, but it didn't matter. People caught on to it. Well, apparently a lot of Biden's allies are like, you shouldn't select Kamala Harris, which is true, by the way. It is true. Kamala Harris is controversial. She says dumb things. She's a bad candidate. Joe Biden doesn't need Kamala Harris. He doesn't. This bizarre notion that he needs a black woman on the ticket to earn black votes belies everything that happened in the primaries, where Kamala Harris won zero votes at all, zero votes. And then Joe Biden won an overwhelming majority of black votes in the Democratic primaries. He doesn't need Kamala Harris for this sort of thing. Kamala Harris doesn't bring him anything. Instead, she just becomes the target of focus. So if he's smart, what he will do, he's already suggested he's going to pick a black woman. If he's smart, what he will do is he'll pick somebody who's a little bit less controversial, probably still just as bad. Right? Susan Rice is just a terrible, terrible person. Now, Susan Rice is, aside from lying routinely to the American public about Benghazi, Susan Rice makes bizarre, wild political suggestions on a regular basis when, when when Benjamin Netanyahu spoke in Congress during the Obama administration, she suggested that he did so because he was racist against, against Obama. I mean, she's, she's also radical and crazy, but people don't perceive anything about Susan Rice. She's sort of nondescript. As opposed to Kamala Harris, people have very strong feelings about Kamala Harris, as well they should, because she is very, very bad at being both a senator. She was a bad attorney general of the state of California. So a lot of Biden's allies are now pushing against this, apparently, according to CNBC. Some of Biden's allies are waging a campaign behind the scenes to stop Kamala Harris from becoming his VP. This disgruntled group of at least a dozen Biden backers, including a few of his top donors, initiated the move against Harris close to a month ago, just before a decision is expected. Many who spoke to CNBC declined to be named as these efforts have been made in private. In some cases, her foes have taken their concerns directly to members of Biden's VP search committee, led by former Senator Chris Dodd. By the way, it is nuts that Chris Dodd is leading up that team. Chris Dodd famously had waitress sandwiches with Ted Kennedy back in the 1990s. They literally sexually assaulted waitresses. It was, it was described in an article I think it was in GQ in the early 1990s. Although none of these actions signify that Biden will drop Harris from the list, the movement gives a glimpse into the effort being waged to derail her candidacy. Some remain bitter about her attacks on Biden during primary debates last year, saying they bring into question her loyalty to the former VP. Others argue she's too ambitious and will be solely focused on becoming president herself. Many of these Biden associates have been pushing alternatives like Val Demings from Florida or Karen Bass from California or Susan Rice or, Sa or Senator Tammy Duckworth of Illinois. Of those people, by the way, Duckworth would probably be the best pick simply because her, her service in the military, the fact she lost her legs in Iraq, serving the country, it, it, it makes her politically immune to a lot of the attacks that have been leveraged against other Democrats. Biden said at a press conference Tuesday he will be making his final decision next week. At the time of his remarks, he was holding a set of notes that appeared to vouch for Harris. Some people thought that, that was actually a bit of a misdirect. There are some people who are saying that that you know she'd be a bad pick because she's so opportunistic. That, of course, is exactly right. Biden should pick somebody he's comfortable with. Honestly, th those are the people who tend to, to be the, the most effective VPs, are the people the president is comfortable with. Dick Cheney, 
Biden himself. Obama was pretty comfortable with Biden. The same is not true for Kamala Harris. Okay, meanwhile, on the COVID front, a lot of news about death in Florida. The deaths have been trailing. They're a lagging indicator in Florida, as they are everywhere else. Because the cases spiked pretty strongly in Florida over the past few weeks, you've seen a spike in deaths that is followed by about a week and a half, the spike in cases. Today, Florida said that they'd had about 216 reported deaths. So this didn't all happen today. Those have been happening. Those are reported. You know, the, the reporting comes in. So that's been happening over the past week or so. Florida is total up to about 6,300 deaths, 6,335 deaths. California reported 169 deaths as of yesterday. And, uh, and Texas, so about 121 deaths as of yesterday. Now, there is some really sort of interesting data when it comes to contrasting and comparing states because the media have been very focused in on the idea that Florida and Arizona and Texas really botched this thing, but New York and New Jersey are doing exactly the right thing. You see this being said over and over and over again. That's not right. Also, there's not a lot of evidence that California has peaked yet. So while everybody is focusing on Texas and Arizona and Florida, the evidence tends to show the hospitalizations are now going down. Case diagnosis is actually going down. We've now reached the other side of the hill for those states. California continues to escalate. But in terms of which states did well and which states did not, if you look at total cases per 1 million population, the top five states in terms of total cases per million population are Louisiana, Arizona, New York, Florida, and New Jersey. In terms of deaths per 1 million population, for Arizona, New York, Florida, New Jersey, right? That, that provides a pretty good, that provides a pretty good sort of counter. Arizona has 475 deaths per million. New York has nearly 1,700 deaths per million. Florida has 295 deaths per million. New Jersey had 1,787 deaths per million. So for all the talk about how the, the Arizonas and the Floridas of the world blew it, their death rate is anywhere from one-eighth to one-quarter the death rate in New Jersey and New York. So spare me all of the, all of the Andrew Cuomo is a great governor and Ron DeSantis is a disaster area. That obviously is, is simply not true. Okay, well, we will be back here tomorrow with much, much more. And, uh, and make sure that you go and pick up a copy of my new book, How to Destroy America in Three Easy Steps. It's soaring up the bestseller charts. Keep it going. Really appreciate it. I'm Ben Shapiro. This is The Ben Shapiro Show. The Ben Shapiro Show is produced by Colton Haas. Executive producer, Jeremy Boring. Supervising producer, Mathis Glover and Robert Sterling. Assistant director, Pavel Wydowski. Technical producer, Austin Stevens. Playback and media operated by Nick Sheehan. Associate producer, Katie Swinnerton. Edited by Adam Saievitz. Audio is mixed by Mike Coromina. Hair and makeup is by Nika Geneva. The Ben Shapiro Show is a Daily Wire production. Copyright Daily Wire 2020. Eric Swalwell blows hot air, Bill Barr burns down Congress, and big tech is swinging the election for Joe Biden. Check it out on The Michael Knowles Show. Hey, 